Hey, I'm Chris Murphy with Murphy Brothers. We're going to do another video in our walk around series. Again, just to remind you, a walk around video is not a sales pitch. This is what we do when you buy this tractor. We're going to go around this tractor with you and we're going to show you where to check it, where to grease it, where to fill it, where to do this, where to do that, how to operate it, and that kind of thing. So just kind of want people to see where everything is and, and the best get their best experience out of the tractor. So this is the LS MT573 CPS. CPS stands for Cab Power Shuttle. Cab Power Shuttle, CPS. This is also available in the 573C, which is a mechanical shuttle. Only sold a couple of those. I really like the Power Shuttle better, especially for the money difference. Most time when you check at your dealer, there's very little difference in the money. Um, this tractor does have the new R14 tires. We're gonna get you a good show of that in just a minute. But let's get started on this walk around. On your loader, you do have universal skid steer hookups, just like we've talked about in all these other videos. Um, you want to make sure that your pin is down in the hole whenever you... Can you see right here that that pin, that wedge pin is going into that lock. If it's not locked in there, like I say, that bucket can come back to you. So you got to be careful with that. In that area, you do want to keep that clean. You want to keep it lubricated a little bit, a little spray lubricant from time to time. If you're just walking past, grab those handles and pull them up and work them back down. Just make sure they're not sticking. If they are, take something, tap it loose, clean it up, get a little oil on it or something. Now, every joint on the loader greases. Now, a lot of people ask this, why is this, why has it got all this extra linkages and stuff up here? Well, that is mechanical self-leveling. Uh, that is going to keep your bucket, if you, as you raise up, if it didn't have that, a bucket's going to come up like this, or basically like this. The, the dirt could dump out the, back, the top side of the bucket on your hood. With self-leveling, if it's here in this position when you raise, it's going to stay in that position. This is just going to force this to stay as it goes up. Now back to the grease fittings. Grease fittings on all your joints. Now underneath the front axle, they're on the other side. We'll get that in a minute. But you're gonna grease both the, the front and the rear trunnion where the axle pivots underneath this cast iron uh, front bolster. It does grease. Now you do have a grease fitting right here on your king pin. On both, both, both ends of this axle has a king pin. This king pin does grease, okay? Your tie rod ends are sealed on this unit. Now you can get right here, you can see a good view from the, from the left-hand side of the loader frame. You can see it even better on the, on the uh, right-hand side in a minute. But that is a big, heavy, thick loader frame. People don't understand, when you got a loader frame this big, you're putting all that pressure right in the middle of the tractor, which between the two axles is gonna be the weakest point of anybody's tractor. If you don't spread that load out, and it's really spread out on this tractor, to get the lift capacity it's got, you've got to spread that load out to give you more strength and more, more rigidity. It's also tied all the way to the back. Again, we'll see that on the other side. <clears throat> Let's walk back to the back. Move this SMV out of the way. Starting at the top, you certainly have a top link, three-point hitch arms. Both of the uprights here grease. That's where you can adjust this side to side lateral motion. You do have lower links that slide in and out. Makes it a lot easier to hook up. Now, your drawbar comes with a hammer strap. This is just bolted to this regular drawbar. Some, in, some applications you're gonna use, you can't use a hammer strap. I'm pulling my flex wing cutter and I can't use the hammer strap. So I just unbolt it and take it off. But other applications you may need it. Comes with it standard. Now. You've got three sets of rear remote valves. You, and they're all color coordinated. You've got three colors of levers up here for these. The black one goes with the black lever, the blue one with the blue one, and the green one with the green one. You do have rear hitch controls right here. When the tractor's running, if I'm moving this, I'm simply moving the lever beside the seat that raises and lowers the three-point hitch. So when you get ready to, uh, you get ready to hook up something on your three-point hitch, and you need it to come up a little bit, instead of having to run around, climb up in the cab, move it, you can simply move this lever and you're gonna raise and lower it very slightly to get you where you can hook up. Of course, that in conjunction with the ends that slide out makes it very, very, very nice. Um, 
It does come standard with an ag agricultural style electrical plug. Um, hydraulic fluid. Hydraulic fluid is right here. See it's painted white. Anything on an LS tractor that's painted white is generally a place to add, fill, or check. I had a customer one time, he asked, he said, Murphy, how do you, how you tell how much is in there? There's no marks. I said, well, turn the stick over. You got two, got two, got two marks on there. You have to look really close to see how clear that, that fluid is. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video, but that fluid is very, very, very clear. If you do have to add any to that, you'll add it back right here. A lot of LS tractors, you add it back in the same hole, but you feel your hydraulic transmission right here. Dipstick to check it here. You do have a grease fitting here where the, the, the pivot arm for the three-point hitch moves. As the top link pushes in, it's going to move this rod and, and raise you up as far as your depth on your draft control. A lot of people don't understand draft control. That's another good video. We ought to shoot how draft control works and why it works. But unless you're plowing, you're probably not going to be using draft control. But this, you do grease that where anything moves there. Your stabilizers are good and heavy. This is a brand new tractor, it's still painted pretty good. But you've got a slotted hole where you can give yourself a little bit of motion. Or you've got a rigid hole where you don't have much motion at all. I generally prefer to use it in the rigid hole. Uh, but you will have to adjust your length by turning. You can see right here, you can even get a wrench right here on this piece if it was, if it was tight or whatever. But I prefer to use the rigid hole myself. I don't, like, I don't like my implements to be swapping lanes on me. Let's step on around here. Let's look at this right here right quick. We've not covered this on any of the other videos. When you buy a new tractor and you've got new wheels, you've got new paint and new paint on the wheel and new paint on the flanges, you bolt it together, okay? You hear horror stories of people saying, oh, my wheel fell off the day I got it or whatever. Never happened to us because we always check this and torque and everything else, but some, some people don't, so be careful. Check your tightness on your lug nuts and on your rim nuts from time to time, especially when the tractor is new because you got new paint and new paint. Very minutely it's doing this, it's causing a little friction. That paint's gonna get thin, nuts will get loose and that doesn't matter if it's a blue tractor, green tractor, orange tractor, red tractor, whatever. Painted wheels, painted flanges, paint gets thin, nuts get loose. So make sure and check your lug nuts. Also the same thing on your loader frames. All your loader frame connections need to be checked. Whenever a customer buys one from us, we beg them to bring it back to us for the initial break-in service at 50 hours. We always do that. Um, even though we charge to do that, it is peace of mind that you're not gonna have something fall loose. So rarely ever do we find anything loose after we've checked, but check it. Uh, and that's front wheels as well. Now, right here on this tractor, up top here, You've got fresh air filters. That is the fresh air intake for your air conditioner in your cab. You've got one of these on both sides of the cab, one on, one on the left and one on the right. It's in the same position. It's just got little, little thumb nuts on it. Make sure that those are snug. I've never had a customer lose one uh, that vibrated loose, but I've always warned people about that. Make sure that you just snug those down, but you just got a regular filter in there. You can blow that out and that kind of thing, but if you get a hole in it, you're inviting dirt and dust into your cab. Most of the time, I always recommend people run their air conditioner on recirculated, on recirculated air because you don't want fresh dirt and dust <laughs> in the cab. You want the same clean air going back through and it's gonna cool back. Um, under here, you do see this comes with a small toolbox here on a mount. You've got your loader valve up top. From here up is your loader valve. What's neat about this tractor from here down, I'm not sure if you can see the solenoid here. And you've got one on this side as well, right here. Those are the solenoids that work the third function valve that comes standard on an MT573. It comes standard with the valve. It comes standard with the switches. 
all you have to buy if you want to use this tractor with a third function like a grapple or some hydraulics on the front you have to buy this hose kit rubber hoses go up to metal lines down here and comes out here to adapters on the front comes out here to quick couplers now some of you are going to see this and say hey those couplers don't look like mine well this customer that's got this tractor bought, and he's supposed to be here in any time, so I'm trying to hurry through this. His, his, he's got half inch couplers on his, just like what plugs in the back. What comes standard generally on, on a third function is three eighths on tractors. So the, he's got half inch. We had half inch hose couplers here off of his tractor that he's traded in, so we just swapped those out for him. Uh, so this is the third function hose kit. You can see it comes up to these kind of a gold color metal line. So you do have rubber line and steel line in that kit. I want to say that kit is four or five hundred bucks, um, somewhere in that range from LS. But you've got a third function kit, basically comes standard on the MT573, less the lines. You do have to pay extra for those. All right, back over here. I see one thing that uh, I want to bring out. You've got a hand valve right here on one of these loader quick coupler hoses. That is designed, and I definitely read your book because I'm not as familiar with this as, as much as I should be, but that valve is designed, when you take your loader off, you can cut the hand valve off. You can then release the pressure on the coupler on the ball, and that way you can hook it up much easier because it's got weight on it. So that's all, that, that's all this little handle is for. Now, we talked about the loader frame on the other side. You can see the full loader frame. I mean, it goes from way back here to all the way up here. I mean, that's a big loader frame. And it's tied all the way back to the back. You can see the blue rod running underneath there. Now, this tractor um, does have an outboard planetary Carrero front axle. I'm very familiar with these axles. I've been in the construction equipment business most of my life and ag business most of my life. We used to sell that same axle on a, on a backhoe that we used to sell. At one time, it was on a backhoe in the game, but I'm not gonna mention any names, but that is a fantastic front axle. Now, um, see if you can shoot right here. Remember, if it's painted white, it is a place to add, fill, check, or drain. That is your engine oil drain. Now, just like some of the other LSs, that oil pan's got a hump in it for your four-wheel drive shaft to run through. You want to drain both sides, this side and on the other side of the tractor, you drain them both. Very important you take both of them out, very important that you put both of them back in. Uh, just make sure and do that. Now, this is going to be a little hard to see. See if you can shoot right in here. I'm not sure, you see that grease fitting right there on that front trunnion? It's in the, kind of got a, re, in a recessed hole. That's where the axle pivots on the back. When you shoot this one on the front, you can probably see it better. You see it right here? That is where you grease your front axle. Um, of course, this tractor does come standard with cab lights. And just like this light, it is aimable and positionable where you want it. It's got lights on the on the blinkers as well. Does have fold back mirror, so if you did hit something, it will fold back, and not break instead of it. You do have lights on the back as well. Um, I use one of these tractors myself, and I have to wind up cutting at night a lot. The lights do work very well. Um, tell you what, do let me uh, let's cut just a minute, get in the tractor, raise the loader up, and I'll show you how the hood works. All right, we're back with the loader up. I'm going to show you how to raise the hood on the MT573. You've got one push button here. Push the button. Hood raises up on its own strut, automotive style. Very easy to get to everything. When I go to my tractor, I check the engine oil. Engine oil dipstick. Not sure if you can see it, but it does have white paint right there. I'm going to look at my fuel bowl, and I'm looking to see if there's trash or water in the bottom of this bowl. If it does, I'm going to open this up and drain it. This, this tractor does have two fuel filters. It's got one here and one here. Both of them drain. If you did run it out of fuel and you had to prime it, 
It does have a primer button here. It does have a bleeder screw right here. On a common rail engine, you'll never, ever, ever uh, bleed, the, bleed the air off at your injectors. You always bleed it off right here at the filter base. Now, one of the neat things about this tractor that makes the tractor the tractor is a heavy cast iron front bolster. It's like a big tractor, like an old tractor. The battery's easy to get to, air filter's easy to get to, water's easy to check. Now, I still like to check mine at the radiator cap. I think we've had this discussion in a video before about them saying low and high. It should say hot and cold in my opinion, but that's the way it is. You can look here very simply if, it's, if the tractor's been running, but if the tractor's been cold, for, not been run for a week and a half, two weeks, or a day, check it at the cap is where I like to check it. Now, air conditioners. Oh, air conditioners. Air conditioners on tractors are now sealed like in a late model car. Air conditioners before that in a tractor were not, and it was very difficult to keep cold air in the cab. You couldn't hardly compensate for the air going in as the hot air, uh, the air coming in the cab as it going out of the cab. With a sealed unit, it works a lot better. Now, the trick to that, I have customers bring a tractor up here all the time. Chris, my air conditioner's not working. Well, when you raise the hood, dirt falls off of both sides of this condenser. This is your condenser. LS has come up with a great solution here. I can take this wing nut off right here. Now I can get behind this condenser. I've got a lot of customers that keep a battery powered, like a Milwaukee or DeWalt or whatever electric tool that makes a, like a leaf blower, a small one, keep it in the cab and blows this out in the field. Now granted, when you get home back to the shop or whatever, take some compressed air and blow that out really, really well. Wash it if you want to. Now the trick on that is if you use water, you can't quit just getting it wet. You've got to complete it. It's got, you gotta have clean, clean water coming out both sides if you use water. But that is something that I really like on my MT573. Now you do have to, you see it kinda wanted to stop there. You do kinda have to feed the hoses. Sonny, come around here and look at this. You do kinda have to kinda manipulate your hoses just a little bit to get them to go past some of the nuts and stuff that it hangs on there. Now, another thing that we do in this area, you loosen this wing nut right here, and you loosen this wing nut right here, okay? That cover comes off. You've got a wing nut here that you'll take off, And we're not gonna do this right here for the video. There's another one of these wing nuts on the other side, the back side of these that holds this in. You can then pull that fuel cooler out in your hand right here and blow it out. You can pull your oil cooler out here and blow it out in your hand. You've also got a screen right here that, that's got another cover like this on the other side. That screen then comes out the other side to clean your screen. Very easy to do all this in the field. But eventually, like I say, you're gonna to have to get in there and blow out that radiator, blow out that fuel cooler, blow out that oil cooler, and blow out this condenser really well. But in the field, it's very nice. So, just wanted to show y'all that right there. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pull that out. It is definitely worth showing. Now, if you don't think you can't clean that out right there, something's wrong. They just, they really put a lot of thought and effort into this.
get that back on there. And they've really just got these wing nuts on here more for a rattle deal to keep them, keep them from rattling around. When you put them on there, they're not gonna rattle. It's not gonna move, nothing's gonna happen. Snug back up your side covers. And you're good to go. Now while we're in this area, this is your ECM, your computer, your brain box, what a lot of people, whatever you want to call it. This is what runs the engine and the vehicle. This has got your vehicle side and your engine side in it. I always show this to people because this is waterproof. It may not necessarily be pressure washer proof. So you have to be careful because you don't want to force the gaskets in between the two halves of the housing. You don't want to force the gasket in between. So if you're gonna use a pressure washer on your tractor, that's fine. Just be careful with this, bag it or something. Right here's your good connections right here. Everybody has gone more of an automotive style connection and wiring harness on their tractors. When tractors first came out with tier four, that was one of the big deals. That was one of the major deals that caused more issues was connections and wiring harnesses. About everybody in the game has figured it out. LS has done a fantastic job there. You do have automotive style ends. You do have an automotive style harness that is full length. You don't have a bunch of pieces, bit, bits and pieces that come together at a bunch of different junctions. It's a very nice harness that they're using now. Air filter. This air filter is a little bit different than what many people have seen. It does have a particle separator. Uh, a lot of people see military vehicles and they see something that looks like this, they don't understand what that is. Well, it's a particle separator. That's doing the first part of the job and that's gonna catch your big particles and you can squeeze that poofer boot and that's gonna come out. Then, you've got your main air filter. And inside, if I can figure out Ah, yeah, it's got a little clip. My fingers are cold. There it is, I just wasn't pulling in the right place. That's your safety. Never, ever, ever try to blow out or anything on your safety. Your primary, you don't wanna blow it out too hard, blow a hole in it, but your primary, you can brush it off, blow it out with low, low pressure, that kind of thing, but never your safety. Primary, this is your secondary or your safety. And I say that, some people call this a secondary and this one the primary. Never clean this one out. This one you can. And if this one is still clean here, you can just replace this one if you want to. But if this one is ever dirty, you replace them both, just like an inner and an outer air filter, okay? I'm gonna fiddle around and get this back in here and we'll start again. And this air filter will only go in one way. It's got three little notches here. Yep. And you can see that the knot, the little fingers go in here and at the bottom and it goes all the way in. If you didn't have the, the primary in there, if you didn't have that small filter in there correctly, this wouldn't go in there all the way, and then the cap wouldn't close. All righty. I think that about does, it. well, let's go, I wanna show you where the oil filter is. You can see your engine oil filter right here, very easy to get to. Not a whole lot of other stuff on this side of the engine that you'll be doing just on a regular daily routine, but you can see right here, 
This is that wing nut that I took off. This is that wing nut that I took off right here to uh, take out that fuel cooler. You've got another one to take off to take out your oil cooler. And you've got two here that you take off that's just holding a bracket so you can slide the screens out in front of the radiator. You can do this in the field. So I'm gonna shut the hood, we're gonna get in the cab and we're gonna regroup. When I went to get in the tractor, I wanted to remind everybody, um, these caps, do the tractor ignition key unlocks these. Um, on my personal tractor, I'm out where not a lot of people are around. I do, I have swapped mine over to one that does not have uh, a lock on it because the key is plumb on the other side. Unless you got a key in your pocket, that's not the easiest thing to reach and get to. But fuel cap does lock if you're concerned about that. You do have a fuel screen right here. Use it, love it, live it. Make sure that you're straining your fuel before it goes in. I have seen floating articles in, the, in tanks that stop up when it gets to the, to the pickup tube and uh, cause major issues there. So make sure you're straining your, straining your fuel as it goes in. Another thing that came to me, y'all that know me know, I don't think right anyway, but when I opened up the door, you can see this 1,000 PTO shaft. It comes on a flange and you've got a 1,000 speed here. What's in it now is 540. Come back here. I really like this, that this, of course this is new. All right, how that raises up, I can now get my hands around my PTO shaft when I'm hooking up. A lot of times when you're hooking up something on a tractor this size, it's a big heavy CV drive or something like that and you really need to be able to get your hands in here. If this didn't fold, that's really, really hard. A lot of people take those off, but people don't understand that is a very good safety device. But to change from your 540, and you see it's got the big spline, over to the small spline 1000, you're gonna remove these bolts, six bolts. Remove those bolts, get six holes that fit. Some of those are just pinholes that line up. You push that on there, Tighten it down, now you're on 1,000. You do have a gear selector or a speed selector for the PTO in the cab, and we'll show that to you when we get in the cab. So we'll let this down and be right back in the cab. Hey, we're back inside the cab of the MT573. Starting, number one, where your hands are on the steering wheel. As you push this little L-shaped bracket down here, or with your pedal with your foot, that is going to allow the the, the wheel the wheel to tilt and if you notice as you bring it to you the cluster comes with it too so that way you can see what you're looking for you can see your warning lights you can see everything everything that you need um, now you do have a clutch pedal on this tractor and you can use that clutch pedal very easily you do not have to use the clutch on this right here this is your power shuttle you can simply go forward, neutral, and reverse. You do not have to clutch that. Now granted, at higher speeds, you probably would want to use the clutch and the brake, slow down, do something. But this, during, in working range, low, uh, on the low end, on the, on the high end, the low all the way through, four on low, your, your low end to medium, there's nothing wrong with doing this. Now granted, highway speed, use your best judgment there. Um, you turn on your headlights over here, bright lights, dim lights, turn signals, very simple right here. Now, just like most of your other LSs, we do have fog lights in the grill, and it's got a switch right here under the cluster. Under your cluster, you've got a, a flashing beacon switch, which is a good switch. It's wired to the corners of the cab. They don't use that in the States, but you can use it for something else. You do have your inhibit switch for your diesel particulate filter. If it goes through a regen or starting a regen, you don't want it to regen. You hold it, on, um, hold it on inhibit. I don't recommend you do that. More than likely, you don't have a dynamite stash on your, on your place. Um, you're worried about gasoline spill, natural gas leak, something very fumey, something where someplace you wouldn't want to like, light a flick a bick. Um, that's the only time you'd put it in inhibit unless if, if you're in a highly explosive area. But if you're out bush hogging, you're out doing dirt work, you're out doing whatever, you're not worried about pine needles dead grass, uh, sage grass, dead leaves. You're not worried about that kind of thing. You're worried about something that's very, very, very highly explosive and highly combustible. So more than likely, you're gonna keep your fingers off of that switch. 
The next switch is that fog light switch, and then you have your hazard switches, okay? Now, as we move over in the floor, you do have your brakes, of course, and they are separable. You can, you can move a lever here, and you can use just your left, just your right for cutting brakes, just like most other tractors, okay? All right, transmission. We talked about the shuttle lever, forward, neutral, and reverse. You've got three ranges, low, medium, and high. And you've got four speeds in each one of these ranges. Now your shuttle and your speed are fully synchronized. Your range, just like on most tractors, your range is in your left hand, just like on most tractors, before you shift a range, before you go low, medium, or high, you're gonna mash the clutch and you're going to stop. You do not shift the range on the fly. Mash your clutch, come to a stop, shift from low or medium to low or medium to high or whatever. But like I say, do not shift your range while you're moving. But just for an example, we're in low fourth and we're going forward, okay. Now, I, I've been traveling from one end of the farm to the other and I wanna go into a pile. So I wanna take a, I wanna go, I wanna slow down to go into uh, the pile of manure or whatever you're gonna be picking up. You've got a button on the speed transmission. That is a D clutch. So I can push this and I can shift from fourth all the way to first, release that button and it's gonna take off again. I can also put everything in neutral and shift this as well. You can um, also use your clutch, of course. So whenever you're doing that, you can shift these within these ranges, but never the range. Um, you can actually, and this is something you probably would be better at the, at the dealer level to, for them to show you, but you can set how hard this thing takes off or how soft if you just do this. You can set how hard the clutch releases with just, the ma just mashing the pedal, and you can set how hard it releases just using the D-clutch button. So it's got, a, it's got a lot of fancy stuff, but the fancy stuff is fancy stuff that you'll use. I use all of that all the time. As a matter of fact, I've got this, this, and the clutch pedal all set separately because I use them for different things. So that is a very nice transmission in this tractor. Now, over here you've got your joystick. You do have your controls here for your third function that comes factory. You do have a float position to let just the loader arms float. You can still curl your bucket back and forth to make it more aggressive or less aggressive for back dragging. You just pull it back out of that for float. It does have a lock on the joystick. You've got your hand throttle and your foot throttle, okay? You're gonna use your hand throttle to set your RPM. If you've got it set to PTO speed and you're running a cutter or something and it starts bogging down, well, you would take your foot on the foot throttle and overcome that, okay? I don't recommend that you drive with a foot throttle. I've never been a foot throttle guy on a tractor. Um, foot throttle, when you're foot throttling and you let off, it goes back to idle. Well, your hydraulics are going to slow down. Everything, every, nothing is working correctly or as it should be as it is when you're up at RPM. So, when you set your RPM here, just use your foot throttle to overcome whatever it is. And if you're having to do that a lot, you probably need to take a lower gear. Okay. We talked a while ago on the rear hitch, or um, excuse me, on the rear auxiliary valves, and remember we had a black set, a blue set, and a green set. Your green set will go constant flow. Have to put it back in neutral. Your blue set will go constant flow and stay. It'll go constant flow either direction, and you can actually push it up into float. Your black one works the same way. Like when I'm pulling my flex wing uh, bushwhacker cutter, I take this, when I'm letting the wings down, I'm gonna let it all the way down and I'm gonna go to float because I want it to float across the ground. This is where you turn your PTO on. Slide two fingers underneath, push in with your thumb and pull up. Now your PTO is engaged. Uh-oh, it's not turning. Well, right here, we, we hinted to this a while ago when we showed you that shaft. Before you ever put this in gear, make sure your PTO is off by pushing the yellow button. Just hit it with your thumb and it'll turn off. Right here is where you're in 540. Your next notch is neutral. Now in neutral, this is nice. Remember this right here, neutral. When you put it in neutral, you can twist the shaft in the back of the tractor. My 12 foot cutter 
I can't twist that drive shaft around to get it to spline up on the PTO shaft. So if it's in neutral, now I can very easily with one hand turn the shaft in the back of the tractor to spline it up so everything slides right on and it goes up so much easier. Now this tractor has got 540, neutral, 750, and 1000. 750 must be something like 540E. I never use it. I use mine on 540 because I'm running a 540 cutter. Most of your implements that you're gonna have on your place are gonna be 540. So primarily you're gonna use 540 in neutral. If you did need, if you ever did swap for the shaft to the thousand, you've gotta have a thousand implement to match, but you would just take it all the way down to 1000, put that shaft in and turn your PTO on and it'll turn on. So again, make sure you're in gear, what speed you want for your PTO, fingers underneath, Fingers underneath, push in and pull up. PTO is turning. To turn it off, you just knock it down. Your four-wheel drive is electronic. You do have a switch right here. We've had this discussion on engine speed cruise control on several tractors on, that we've already done. Engine speed cruise control will keep your engine RPMs at your desired RPM. Like I've said before, I don't like this feature. Um, I don't like it on anybody's tractor because if I'm if I'm ha if my engine is having to compensate because I'm running my cutter too fast, I want to hear it lug. I want to see it lug, so I know Murphy, you better take a lower gear or raise the cutter or do something different. I like the RPM to stay. I want I want to see what my RPMs are doing. So, all three of these have got to do with your engine speed cruise control. Your differential lock is right here in this first switch here. PTO, manual and auto. In America, we hear auto and we think, okay, that's much better. On your PTO, you're gonna run it on manual. In auto, if you were to lift your three-point hitch or mash the clutch, your PTO would stop. Most of the time, you don't want that. So you're gonna leave it in manual. That way, if you mash your clutch or you lift your three-point hitch up or whatever, the PTO continues turning under power, okay? Calibrate and set. This is probably not something that you're ever going to fool with in there. This is generally something that we use to set the transmission and stuff for you. This plus and minus is where you can adjust those shift levels we were talking about earlier. How hard it shifts on the lever. How hard it shifts on the clutch. How hard it shifts or the how, not how hard it shifts, how quickly the clutch releases when you use the different methods of changing direction or speed or clutch. So it's very neat. It comes up here on the cluster with a level. Level one is very soft, level nine is the hardest. So I've got mine set on my tractor, all different levels. Now, you do have the auto hitch. This is the green T handle. This is all mechanical. When you pull this back and the tractor's running, your three point hitch is gonna go all the way up. When you hit this trip, it's only gonna go down to where you left your position lever. So let's say we're, we're running a cutter right here and I pull this back, the hitch, the, the cutter comes all the way up. When I release it, it's only gonna go down to where I left this the last time. So that is a very, very, very neat feature. Um, my cutter's a draw bar type, so I don't use a three-point hitch much except for my grader and my disc. But uh, like I say, that's a neat, neat, neat feature. Um, you do have, you do have uh, stops that you can adjust your hitch. If you wanna stop right there, it's got stops built in that you can, you can set that on the top and the bottom i might add sometimes you've got an implement that may have teeth on it and you don't want to pick it up too far that they might get in your in your tires so i can set an upper limit as well i really like that now the inside lever is your draft position okay so the the further you have this push the deeper it's going to allow a plow or anything that you're using underground that's digging into the ground it's going to allow it to go further into the ground if I don't want it to go as, as deep or I want it to go more shallow, I pull this up and I inch that up and I work with it until it is at the depth that I want it to stay at. And the tractor is going to take care of it. As it, as it pulls, it's going it's gonna, to it's gonna stay right there at that same level all the way through, just like anybody else's draft control. But it does have draft control standard. That's something on a lot of tractors now, draft control doesn't come standard. Well, if you're, if you're row cropping, you got to have draft control. All right, right here on these switches, you've got front wiper, hold down for front wash. Rear wiper, same thing, hold down for wash. Front cab lights, rear cab lights. Now, when you turn on the front cab lights, that does turn on the ones out, out below the mirrors as well. Tractor does come standard with a radio. 
you do have a dot right here on this dome light. You push that with the key on, the light comes on. A lot of vents in this tractor. The air conditioner in this tractor works very well. And we mentioned a while ago keeping it on, on, on recirculate. Normally in your car, you put it on recirculate in, on, the, on the cluster, on the knobs, and that kind of stuff. And a tractor is a little different. With this lever up, that's fresh air. You can see the air coming into the, into the, the fresh air coming into it with an arrow in the, in the little diagram. As you push down, it shows the air circulating inside the cab. You want that down, and it's got like a little, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's got a little pop there. Leave it there on recirculate, in my opinion. You do what you want to, but I like to keep fresh air in my cab, not dirty air. Now, right here, you do have a little console, little, little place to keep a few little items, little personal items. Uh, like I say, it does have a toolbox underneath the right side of the cab. I've um, had some people go in there and put a bigger box there. So it's, that's completely up to you. One thing I missed, you do have a fuse panel. These fuses in here is not for the running of the tractor. It's more just the, the stuff in the cab, just your cab cab fuses. Most of your other fuses are under the hood and under underneath the side panels under the steering wheel. You also do have a 12 volt outlet right here to charge your, to charge your phone. Um, air conditioner controls. I hinted at those a while ago, but I want you to see them. Now, I do want you to take a look. Look right here. You see the blue light? I'm not sure if you can see it in there or not, but if the blue light is not on, your compressor is not on. So you turn it off by pushing AC, no light, no air. Push it one time, you do have air. And then, of course, just like any other air conditioner control, you, you gauge where, what vents you want it to come out of and that kind of thing. Now, one of my favorite features is right here. It's got a very nice sun visor right there. I always wear my shades in the tractor, but like I say, that is a super nice thing in the right time of the day, and you're, you have to go right toward the sun. That knocks a lot of, lot of glare off right there. Very easy to do this. Now, be careful. If you just hit this, it's going to go up very quickly. So what I always do is hold it, push the button, and let it up. This tractor's even got a sunroof. You can have somebody ride with you and moon your neighbors. No, you don't want to do that. But what this is for, when you're in the barn stacking hay really high, when that loader is up, I can see what I'm doing through this glass. Now, a lot of people do say, well, it does have a handle. You can pop it up, and it does. It will pop up for a vent. If your air conditioner was broken or something like that, probably not a bad idea. But there again, I want clean air in my tractor. I never open up mine. I don't think my tractor has ever been opened um, not that I've done, because like I say, I don't like to get dirt in the seals and everything else. I don't want it to leak. I keep it closed. But what that's for is for vision when you're using your loader up high. Um, I think that's about everything. Oh, no, we haven't even talked about the seat. This is an air ride seat. I love the seat in my tractor. It's got adjustable armrest that I can adjust from my elbow height. Like, like this one is very low, I can dial it in so my elbow hits just right to hit the joystick or my shifter or all, everything else. Very nice seat. This seat does have your fore and aft. It does have a pivot where you can pivot this seat around this way so I'm looking over my right shoulder not having to twist my neck as far. I like that. Um, the seat does have recline. You can recline the seat to your comfort. A lot of people want to lay back. I'm not, I'm not more much as, a, when I was a kid, I drove around laid back, but I, as I get older and fatter, I like to sit up straight to protect my back. Now, the controls for the air, as I pull up on this, listen closely, you'll hear the compressor. As I push down, you'll hear the air release. And you see me going down, as I go down, the air, or as the air comes out, I'm going down. You want this, it does have a gauge right here. And as you pull up on the switch, you'll see the dial in the gauge get up into the, into the happy place. And you just, want that, you just want enough air in that that you're not bottoming out. If, you're, if, you're, if you've got too much air and you're not moving, well, you're not really having any suspension. So you're getting an air ride seat standard in this tractor, and I really do like that keep on forgetting stuff this is creep a little orange lever you pull it up into creep creep works in 
low and medium. In creep, um, creep is just that. It is barely gonna move. So you stop the tractor before you engage or disengage creep, but creep is something that very few of us ever use, but it does come standard with creep. There are applications that you would need creep. So it comes standard in this tractor. So I wanna get out and spend a little time on the tires, cause this is a tire that I really, really love. I wish my tractor had these. We order this tractor nine times out of 10 if, they, if they're available. I try to get it on the Goodyear R14 tread tire. I love this tire. When you get this tire, you're getting a larger diameter rim. Instead of 28s, these are gonna be 30s. You've got a radial tire in lieu of a bi-supply tire, which does ride better. I like a radial tire even, even when we were doing dirt pans and stuff. I like a radial tire much better. And the new tread. This is a hybrid tire. You see you've got your long bar, long bar, just like a regular ag tire. You've got a flatter platform and you've also got the center treads. This tire rides down the road because I do have, to, do have to road my tractor quite a bit. It rides down the road amazingly. I love this new tire. Now this, this tire is an add-on. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm sorry how much more it is. Um, but like I say, this is an additional fee that your dealer will charge. If the, if the tractor's got this, it will cost you more. So um, just wanted to show you these tires because I really dig them. Maybe the next guy that trades, he'll take my old ag tires and he'll, he'll let me have these. But come see us at Murphy Brothers. Go see your local LS dealer. Um, we would love to earn your business if you're in our area. And uh, hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something about the MT573 from LS.